בוקר טוב, good morning and welcome. שומעים, נכון? On behalf of the Moshe Dayan Center's director, Professor Uzi Rabi, uh, who expresses his regret that he couldn't be with us here this morning, my name is Brandon Friedman, and I'm the director of research here at the Moshe Dayan Center. It's my distinct pleasure to be able to open this international conference, Minorities in the Middle East Revisited. First, I'd like to begin by thanking our distinguished guests who've come from abroad. It is the Moshe Dayan Center's honor and privilege to host you here in Israel, and we are grateful for your effort to travel long distances to be here. Thank you. Second, I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Center to congratulate Professor Ofra Bengio on the publication of her most recent book, Kurdistan's Moment in the Middle East. Professor Bengio, or Ofra as I know her, has not only been a trailblazing scholar in her work, but also an ambassador for the field of Kurdish studies as a whole. She has tirelessly promoted academic work on, on the Kurds in Kurdistan, first and foremost by establishing the Kurdish studies program here at the Moshe Dayan Center. Kurdistan's Moment in the Middle East is a collection of Professor Ofer Bengio's essays, which represent more than a decade of outstanding scholarly work on Kurdish issues, both past and present. The book is impressive for both the breadth and depth of the material it covers. The book delves into such topics as Kurdish identity, Kurdish women, and Kurdish-Israeli relations. I found her essay, Separate but Connected, The Butterfly Effect in Kurdistan, to be particularly unique and compelling in its contribution to work on the Kurds. Again, on behalf of the center, Mazal Tov Ofra. It's also fitting that we open this conference with a reminder that 20 years ago, Minorities in the State in the Arab World, which was edited by Professor Bengio and Professor Bendor, was published. This impressive volume of essays, most of which were written by Dayan Center researchers, presents this conference with a point of departure for its discussion today. The book reminds us that the concept of minorities is conditional and fluid and states that it will treat minorities not necessarily in numerical terms, but in terms of, its, of their political standing within the state, that is, their lack of political power. In short, 20 years later, this topic demands to be revisited anew because it remains no less relevant and important. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the center's administrative staff for all of their hard work in putting this event together. Uh, in particular, Efrat Shulman Arad, Zava Cohen, Moor Wittmann, and Tali Marko. For all of their hard work, uh, they are the center's hidden heroes. Thank you. Um, I, wish, uh, I wish you all a fruitful and productive conference. Uh, we can promptly begin today's program in the first panel, Minorities in a Changing Middle East, which will be chaired by the Moshe Dayan Center's founder and distinguished scholar and statesman, Professor Shimon Shamir. Good morning. Allow me to uh, launch this first session of our conference uh, with a few uh, con introductory remarks. In the history of the Middle East in recent centuries, the question of minorities was regarded in two different ways. In the Ottoman entity, the dominant and mainstream power, minorities were integrated into the imperial structure through the millet system and the regionalist structure which gave minorities a certain autonomy based on either on personal status or on geographical concentration. The Ottomans managed to create an administrative, legal, and fiscal modus vivendi, which marginalized the position of minorities and stabilized the system. For the European powers, on the other hand, minorities were tools for penetrating, exerting influence, and eventually changing the Ottoman system. If we focus on the 19th century, um, 19th century history of Palestine and the Levant in general, we see the French extending their protection over the Maronite and Roman Catholic minorities, the British over Druze and Jewish communities, and the Russians over the Greek Orthodox community. The bonds they had thus established enabled them both to intervene in local affairs and put pressure on the government in Istanbul. 
Hence, the great interest that the subject of minorities attracted in the viewpoint of Europeans, which in turn influenced its place in Middle Eastern studies. The problem, what a minority is and how it should be defined, did not generate extensive deliberations or caused too much concern. Minorities were, as the Oxford Dictionary puts it, I quote, a relatively small group of people differing from others, mostly in race, religion, and language. In other words, they were defined by size and otherness. As we all know, this definition has recently changed. Numbers and identities are no longer the qualifying considerations. What is now seen as the main defining factor is subjection to subordination and discrimination. Women may uh, statistically be more numerous than men and belong to the same broad culture and yet be defined as a minority. It is the disadvantageous position that counts. This may also lead in the opposite direction. The term minority that may thus be seen as carrying a stigma of inferiority and suspected to be a normative appellation can be rejected by groups that are commonly regarded as minorities. Thus, in our region, the Coptic community refuses to be defined as a minority. The, um, sorry, community refuses to be defined as minority because it regards itself as superior in terms of links to Egypt's cultural and historical roots. Israeli Arabs refuse to be called a minority, relying on the dominant place of Arabs in the region and the overriding position of the Arabs in Palestine before the establishment of the Zionist state. Perhaps we can combine the traditional and the recent conceptions by using a definition once proposed by Pierre Rondeau. I quote, a minority, he suggested, is a human group that is different from the entity amidst which it lives in language, religion, ethnicity, social structure, consciousness of its distinctiveness and other collective features, and which in relation to that entity is at a disadvantage numerically or in social status. I am sure we shall hear more about this issue in the presentations of this session.